فتح روما فتح ايطاليا يعني والأوروبا معنى هذا انه الاسلام سيعود الى اوروبا مرة اخرى هل من ضرورة الفتح ان يكون بالحرب لا ليس من الضرورة هناك فتح سلمي ولذلك انا ارى ان الفتح القادم سيكون فتح الدعوة ولكن طبعا لابد للمسلمين ان يتحركوا حتى يفتحوا هذا العالم Europeans disagree on many things. That is the nature of politics. We disagree about the proper size of government. We disagree about what constitutes fair taxation. We disagree about how and what to teach in schools. Disagreement in most cases is healthy. But there are some things most Europeans agree on. There are some things modern Europe was built on, among which we can count respect for our heritage, democracy, the free exchange of different ideas, the freedom of belief, and the right to various forms of creative expression. A very different perspective is Islamism. Islamism is first and foremost a political ideology aimed at imposing Sharia on society. It is a worldview which maintains that all aspects of society should be ruled in accordance with what is conceived as a return to authentic Islamic practice in its totality. Where applied, it stifles freedom of speech, worship, relationships, culture, and entertainment, and inflict harsh punishments on people who disobey. And this is the victim, named as Samuel Patti, a teacher in his 40s, brutally murdered on this street. Police believe Samuel Patti was targeted because he showed people's controversial cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad. Author Salman Rushdie stabbed on stage right before he was to give a lecture. Police say the suspect, now in custody, is 24-year-old Hadi Mata. Islamism is not synonymous with jihadism, or in other words, with terrorism. But its intolerant attitude towards difference, disobedience, and disrespect enables people who are, both at home, and abroad. Ce à quoi nous devons nous attaquer, c'est le séparatisme islamiste. Even peaceful Islamism lays the foundations for theocratic states with dreadful consequences for religious minorities, sexual minorities, and women, as can be observed across the Middle East and South Asia. Allah sallata alayhim, dwal al-tariq, man yu'addibuhum, natina ta ifsadihim. Man aqubat man yumaris al-liwata wa sihaq. سواء بعضهم قال نرميهم من حالق زي ربنا ما عمل في قوم لوط وبعضهم قال نحرقهم وبعضهم. But Islamists are active in Europe as well, in more subtle forms, perhaps, but active nonetheless. Charlie Weimers, MEP of the Swedish Democrats and the European Conservatives and Reformists, has been a vocal critic of Islamism in Europe. In 2019, I ran for the European Parliament and I promised to fight Islamism, uh, whether violent or non-violent in all its form. You might think that the European Union would be a natural opponent of Islamism, but you would be wrong. The desire to defend Europe's Muslim minorities from real and supposed occurrences of individual and collective bigotry has opened the doors for dangerous ideological actors. Mr. Weimers was concerned that the European Union had been funding and otherwise enabling Islamist organizations. Because I knew that in, back in Sweden there was a substantial funding of organizations with connections to the Muslim brother, Brotherhood milieu. Um, and I gathered that this problem probably existed here in Brussels as well. Weimers raised the issue at a meeting of the Committee on Civil Liberties, Justice and Home Affairs at the European Parliament in 2020 focusing on the case of the transnational Islamist group, the Muslim Brotherhood. Founded in the 1920s by the Egyptian Imam Hassan al-Banna, the Muslim Brotherhood seeks worldwide Islamization and the imposition of Sharia law. Saeed Khatab, the Islamist ideologue whose visceral hatred of the United States and the West at large went on to inspire al-Qaeda, was an important member of the organization. It exploited the Arab Spring to take power in Egypt in 2012 before its president, Mohamed Morsi, was overthrown by the armed forces in 2013. Taking spiritual and political inspiration from the theocratic cleric Yusuf al karadawi though, the Muslim Brotherhood continues to project influence around the world. Unlike Al-Qaeda and ISIS, it is not primarily a jihadist organization, but that does not mean it is not dangerous. The Muslim Brotherhood employs activism and infiltration to spread its dark ideas. As Dr. Lorenzo Vadino, author of The New Muslim Brotherhood in the West, has explained, the Brotherhood aims at being entrusted by European governments with administering all aspects of Muslim life in each country. 
This position would also allow them to be the de facto official Muslim voice in public debates and in the media, overshadowing competing forces. Vadino explains, since the 1950s and up to now, members of the Brotherhood have been able to obtain asylum and citizenship, set up mosques and institutions, disseminate their propaganda, collect funds, recruit new members, and even be seen as moderate partners of European establishments, their institutions often being seen as modern interlocutors. With this in mind, Weimers addressed the commission. När att uh, ett prioriterat område i den europeiska säkerhetsunionen är bekämpandet av terrorism, förebyggandet av radikalisering. Och jag instämmer till fullo att uh, det är väldigt viktigt uh, att göra det för att uh, kunna ha den sociala sammanhållning som vi alla önskar. Det för mig till en organisation som heter Muslimska brödraskapet som, som är kända för intolerans, segregationistiska krav och för att ge stöd till terrorism. Förra mandatperioden gav unionen nämligen stöd och finansiering till organisationer med kopplingar till islamism. Organisationer som Muslimska brödraskapet. Med tanke på vikten av social sammanhållning i våra samhällen skulle du inte instämma i att det vore problematiskt att fortsätta stödja segregationistiska grupper? Kan du i egenskap av kommissionär för främjandet av det europeiska sättet att leva garantera att EU-finansiering i fortsättningen endast kommer att beviljas till organisationer och grupper som accepterar europeiska värderingar? Margarita Sheenis, Commissioner for Promoting Our European Way of Life, rejected Weimar's claims before requesting evidence. The European Commission does not finance extremists. On the contrary, we have very strong oversight and audit of our financing interventions. And if you have evidence to the contrary, I would be very interested to, 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 to have it. Sounds like a challenge, and one that Mr. Weimers took. He commissioned a report from two experts on extremism. Dr. Paul Stott, head of security and extremism at Policy Exchange in Britain, and Dr. Tommaso Virgili, postdoctoral research fellow at the Berlin Social Science Center. Their report, Network of Networks, the Muslim Brotherhood in Europe, argued that the Muslim Brotherhood is not a supporter of liberal democracy or Western values. It sits outside the European political tradition. However, in the West, it attempts to claim and occupy space at local, national, and supranational levels. Proponents of its ideals, the report continued, will use concepts of religious freedom alongside claims of community representation, multiculturalism, identity, and calls for dialogue between and across civilizations in order to do so. This strategy includes tactical alliances with progressive movements, but it does not change the final goal of a state based on Sharia law. The report named numerous examples of groups linked to the Muslim Brotherhood that had received EU funds, including Islamic Relief, recipient of tens of millions of euros across 12 years, despite its members displaying common themes of anti-Semitism, support for violence, and sympathy for Hamas, or the Federation of Muslim Youth and Student Organizations, or FEMYSO, which has received hundreds of thousands of euros from EU funds, despite familial and organizational links to Muslim Brotherhood members. There were other troubling examples of the EU enabling Islamist activities. In 2018, the European Commission funded an Islamophobia report created by a Turkish think tank linked to President Recep Erdogan. This report, critics argued, conflated reasonable criticism with bigotry. An open letter by German intellectuals claimed that it was intended to stop, prevent, or at least discredit any critical public engagement with Islam and Islamist tendencies. At the launch of the report, the Dutch sociologist Ruud Koopmans cleverly compared the EU's treatment of Islamist groups with its treatment of right-wing nationalists. So would, would the European Union subsidize a right-wing organization with 40 million euros, of which several of the leaders of that organization have made very extreme vitriolic anti-Semitic statements? Would the EU subsidize a report on hostility towards Russians and other Slavic peoples written by a foundation with close links to Vladimir Putin and his party? To ask the questions was to answer them. Armed with this information, Mr. Weimer spoke to the Committee on Civil Liberties, Justice and Home Affairs again in January 2022. The French government had cracked down on Islamism in the aftermath of the killing of the teacher Samuel Paty in 2020. 
which was itself followed by the lethal stabbings of three French civilians by an Islamist militant in Nice. Islamist funding had been a particular cause for concern. For example, the French Interior Ministry had scolded municipal authorities in Strasbourg for approving a grant to a Turkish Muslim group that had refused to sign an anti-extremism charter. Mr. Weimers asked the French Minister of Justice, Eric dupont moretti if he could join him in opposing EU financing of Islamist organizations. Je me félicite de l'accent mis par, par la France sur la nécessité de promouvoir la tolérance et de sa décision de cesser le financement public d'organisations promouvant euh, le séparatisme islamiste. Un rapport récemment publié sur euh, les frères musulmans fait état de liaisons dangereuses entre ce réseau islamiste et la Commission européenne. Deux éminents universitaires ont découvert qu'au cours de la dernière décennie, la Commission a fourni des centaines de milliers d'euros à des organisations du milieu des frères musulmans. Et Islamic Relief, que de nombreux États membres ont récemment cessé de financer après une série de scandales antisémites, la France fera-t-elle pression pour mettre fin au financement de l'UE aux organisations de milieu des frères musulmans et agira-t-elle pour sensibiliser les institutions de l'UE qu'elle s'abstienne de légitimer des organisations séparatistes islamistes Mr. dupont moretti was taken aback but also concerned. Je suis un peu surpris par votre question en réalité. Vous me parlez du financement euh, d'islamistes par la Commission. Euh, C'est une question qui concerne d'abord la Commission. Je suis attentif à ce que vous me dites et que je serai extrêmement vigilant sur cette question et sur ce sujet. Weimer's words seem to have an effect. Just hours after this exchange, the French presidency issued encouragement for the European Union to take Islamism more seriously. We wish to raise awareness in the EU Council on the issues posed by certain individuals and entities who contribute to the radicalization, said a spokesperson, and invite member states to take measures to hinder their activities, including financial activities. Emboldened, Mr. Weimers addressed Gerald Darmanin, the French Minister of the Interior. Notre collègue, M. dupont moretti nous a dit qu'il a ne pas pouvoir agir contre le financement public dans son organisation du milieu des frères musulmans. La République française est un acteur important en Europe. Confirmez-vous que la France ne se lavera pas les mains du financement des organisations islamistes par l'UE. Êtes-vous prêt à lancer un débat visant à empêcher l'UE d'envoyer l'argent de, des contribuables au euh, séparatisme islamiste Merci. Darmanin took this challenge seriously. Vous savez bien que ce sont parfois des sujets euh, éminemment euh, nationaux avec des législations éminemment euh, nationales et parfois des certaines conceptions qu'on a de, du droit d'association, du droit euh, de culte, du droit d'expression euh, et euh, de la place des religions dans, dans les sociétés. Donc je ne pourrais pas euh, vous donner une réponse euh, évidemment qui peut engager la présidence euh, française. Mais nous avons souhaité que ce sujet de financement des activités euh, euh, extrémistes, qu'elles soient d'ailleurs islamistes ou d'extrême droite. Hein. Euh, J'ai donc proposé, euh, pour répondre totalement à votre question, lors de ce moment euh, à Lille, que nous puissions évoquer la question de la radicalisation et du financement de la radicalisation. On aura l'occasion, euh, le 3 mars prochain, d'en reparler avec mes collègues. The stage was set. It was time for Weimers to face Commissioner Sheenus once again. Was the EU as stringent as the Commissioner had claimed? or was there evidence of a problem? Weimers addressed Sheenas in July 2022. Thank you, Commissioner Skinas, for your commitment to dialogue. Uh, that is indeed appreciated. And as you are the, the Commissioner for the European Way of Life, I cannot uh, refrain from bringing up a subject which we discussed uh, last time we had an exchange in uh, the Libe Committee, which is now quite a while ago. During that exchange, you noted that the European Commission does not fund extremist organizations, and you encouraged me to share any evidence to the contrary. Um, I took you at your word. So on behalf of the ECR group, I commissioned a report. Uh, this report, written by two esteemed scholars, outlines organizations associated with the Muslim Brotherhood that have indeed received EU funding 
such as FEMISO, Islamic Relief Worldwide, and others. Considering that the French presidency on February the 1st sent out a letter to all the member states named Countering Radicalization, Fighting the Influence of Ideologies um, Spread by Extremist Individuals and Entities, uh, where they uh, quest, uh, put a question to the member state, which uh, was this, what detection capacities and means of action are available to combat the funding from either public bodies or foreign sources of entities promoting discourse that is at odds with European values? Considering this, does the Commission currently fund Muslim Brotherhood affiliated organizations and will it consider a revision of such funding? Commissioner Sheenas responded more seriously this time. On funding, um, I'm not in charge of funding. This is uh, something that pertains to my colleague, Didier Reinders, who manages uh, uh, through our uh, corresponding instruments. Uh, he explained to me and to the French presidency at the time that the selection of this process is done in a way which is uh, by independent panels. There is no political uh, margin of appreciation there. Sheenas could not answer specific claims, but he showed a new appreciation of the gravity of the problem. But I take very seriously the allegations uh, made uh, by you, but also very different uh, political representatives from across the political spectrum and governments on the need to introduce a more stringent evaluation procedure for this type of funding. And this is something certainly that uh, Didier Reinders is well aware of. So perhaps that oversight had not been as stringent to begin with as Commissioner Sheenas had supposed. It appears as much as other politicians add their voices to criticism of EU financing, such as the Czech MEP Tomas Chadovsky, who said, assigning EU funds to people who want to destroy our freedom is ridiculous and we cannot ignore this danger anymore. The pressure is on for the EU to seek belated accountability and change. This is an old story, of course. Too often, European institutions are naive in the face of ideological actors they cannot comprehend. It is assumed that everyone who presents themselves as progressive and humanitarian, or as oppressed and marginalized, is precisely what they claim. But appearances can be deceptive, and familiarity with modish buzzwords does not make amenable to European values. However, broadly one construes the concept. This enabling must stop. As Paul Stott and Tommaso Virgili write, taxpayers are entitled to ask if these are the sort of organizations Europe's institutions should be funding, and if so, what is their vision for the future of the continent? We can only hope that the European Union pays heed. After all, the Islamic State might have lost most of its power, and the head of Al-Qaeda might have been killed, but Islamic extremism still threatens Europe. Last year, David Amos, MP, was murdered in England. A Christian evangelist was stabbed at Speaker's Corner. Dutch police averted a major terrorist attack. This year, two men were killed at a gay bar in Oslo. Salman Rushdie was stabbed. In America, to be sure. But it would be foolish to localize an international phenomenon. We face complex, multifaceted problems that demand complex, multifaceted responses. But the least, the very least, that we can do is not to hand taxpayers' money to organizations that oppose the moral and cultural foundations of our societies. It would be hard to think of a more vivid example of political self-harm than that. As Charlie Weimer says, This issue remains more important than ever. We sincerely hope Prime Minister Fiala and the Czech EU presidency will pick up the baton and once and for all end all public funding to Islamist organizations from the EU budget. Citizens deserve nothing less.